you. Thank you for inviting us into your literal home and your space and yes. being a part of this story. I was 18 weeks pregnant and on August 23rd, I went for a walk and I could tell that something was wrong. I messaged my OB. She discovered that I have or had something called an incompetent cervix, which basically means that I had dilated obviously way too early. And so she informed me that a uh, miscarriage was inevitable. Both of us wondered like, if this is inevitable, what's the next thing for us? What is our next course for healthcare? We asked our doctor and we asked the MFM and we asked all the nurses, you know, isn't there something you can do? And they said, no, I couldn't make the decision for myself. We couldn't make the decision for our daughter. Our doctors couldn't make the decision. I mean, they were just as furious as we were because their hands were tied. I mean, had they acted, they would have been charged with a felony. Being told that you're going to lose your baby and you just have to live with it for several days and there's nothing we can do. I was left, you know, wanting either to get so sick that my life is at risk or that my baby's heart stopped beating so that it could be over. One of the challenges is it's very difficult to travel from Austin. We also are bordered by many states that are just as fucked up as Texas is right now. So that was off the table as soon as we knew that she could get sick quickly or she could go into delivery quickly. I thought, okay, let's get this horrific thing over where I have to deliver my daughter 22 weeks early and then I'll go home and we can start the healing process. I don't think I understood at that point that I was septic, but I was, I knew that it was more sick than I was supposed to be. It was just so frustrating to, to be dealing with something so traumatic and then basically let's just gamble with the outcome of, of Amanda's life um, unnecessarily just made me so mad. One of the things that I just kept thinking about was what are what's gonna happen to all these other people? This is the best version of that story is that I'm in the ICU for a week, but I didn't die. So, you know, you think about all of the people that aren't as fortunate as us and how it's gonna impact them. And all of the staff in the hospitals, everyone was talking about how, you know, these types of laws are not going to end abortion, it's just going to make it extremely dangerous and the mortality rate is going to skyrocket. I find the notion of pro-life as a talking point to be one of the most hypocritical things. What part of this has been pro-life? We went through 18 months of fertility treatment, so this is something that we wanted and something that we fought for. and. We were 18 weeks in when this happened. And from that point on, there was nothing pro-life about what we were going through. Our baby um, had three or four days of suffering. Amanda had weeks of suffering, both physically and emotionally because of this. You know, I don't, I don't think we could have saved the baby. That was evident but we could have prevented a lot of additional pain. We named her Willow um, because willow trees are known for their strength. Even as I was getting sicker and sicker and the infection was taking over, she was a fighter. And, you know, we want to fight for her. This never should have happened to her. It shouldn't have happened to us. And. We're gonna take the strength that she had and that she planted in us and we're gonna use it to fight because this has to change. <laughs>